one point about Offensive Rookie of the Year, because I agree with you, Puka Nakua, if he gets 29 receiving yards on Sunday, and Sean McVay said it without saying it earlier this week, they're going to leave him in long enough to do something special. 29 yards, and he breaks the record that goes all the way back to Bill Groman of the Houston Oilers in 1960. That It's just amazing to me that all the great receivers we've seen over the years, Super Bowl era, high-flying NFL, once they changed the rules in the 70s and they started to relax it and make it easier, still holding that record with 1,473 receiving yards as a rookie, Bill Groman. And we told some of his story yesterday, Peter. I don't know if you're aware of this. Guy was was a teacher. He was teaching eighth grade math. And, and like, a friend said, let's go have a catch. And they had a catch. And this friend was friends with the guy who was going to be the coach of the Houston Oilers. And he called him up and said, I may have something for you here. That's how he got into pro football. It's just amazing. He played at Heidelberg for crying out loud. So what a story. And I think that it's a great occasion. I'm going to write something about it yeah. today. It's a great story that, that that record from a guy who is for 99.9999% of football fans, not even a known name, not even forgotten. It just was never even on their radar screen that that record still stands and it might not stand after Sunday. And it's an opportunity to appreciate what Bill Groman did and how it stood the test of time for 63 years. I think I would just say two things about Bill Groman, 1,473 yards and all that. And I hate to say this because it minimizes uh, somebody. I, you know, it's, it's, I'm going to minimize both things. Number one, I would like to see what the first year of the American Football League was like. You know, uh, I, I, guys being picked out of English classes. and guy, I, so, so, again, I don't know that, that good tape exists about 1960 and the AFL when 8,000 people went to some of the games. I, I, so again, there's that. And then there's also this. The AFL records count in the NFL. And what I've always thought was totally unfair is that the AFL records count in the NFL, but the All-America Football Conference records don't. I mean, why is that? All-America Football Conference, I could argue, was a better brand of football than the early days of the AFL, or, or at least the equal of it. So the four years of the AAFC from 46 to 49, it's like it never happened, you know? But there's one other part of this, Mike, one other part of this. And that is Puka Nakua would be doing it in 17 games. And, and again, I am not minimizing what Puka Naku is doing. I might vote for him for, defense, for Offensive Rookie of the Year. But the way the league has worked the schedule now, <clears throat> it's just different. Records should be maybe not asterisk, but it should be at least noted that if you play 17 games and break a record, it should be at least noted that you played more games than the guy who had played in a 14 or a 16 game season, or for that matter, a 12 game season three generations ago. But you know, when they went from 14 to 16, that was never a conversation. When Eric Dickerson broke OJ Simpson's record, it was never even brought up. He had two extra games. That's what's odd because it is relevant, but the number of games is the number of games. It's relevant. It's 14 I'm not games saying it should, for Bill it Groman. I agree. It's relevant. I agree. I agree. Listen to this from Bill Groman. 14 games, 1,473 yards. That is 105.2 yards per game. And he did it almost the next year, too. He had another 1175. In two seasons, he averaged 94.5 yards per game over two seasons. And he had 29 receiving touchdowns in 28 games. It really is incredible. And, and, and I share your curiosity and what it all looked like and what the quality of the players were. But still, it was a level of dominance relative to the competition. I mean, all you can do is compete relative to the competition. It was a level of dominance that yeah. we haven't seen from a rookie receiver since then. And I don't think we're ever going to see somebody average 
105.2 yards per game. Although, as I say that, somebody probably will next year. Marvin Harrison Jr. will probably average 105.3 yards. But Calvin Johnson did it. Did what? I mean, I don't know. Calvin Johnson probably did. I don't know what he he must have. Well, I mean, a rookie. I mean, a rookie that year. Oh, a rookie. Yeah. A rookie. He had yeah. 1,900. And, yeah, I'm talking about a rookie doing it. Not I, a guy straight into the NFL and average over 100 yards per game receiving would be incredible. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.